Assalamualaikum and hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I would like to discuss about bond payable and interest expense. What is the definition of bond? A bond is a fixed income instrument that represents a loan made by an investor to a borrower, typically corporate or government. Large companies need large amounts of money to finance their operation. They may take out long-term loans from banks and or issue bonds to the public to raise the money. Bond payable are long-term debts issued to multiple lenders called bondholders. For example, a company could borrow RM100,000 from one lender or from the bank or it could issue 100 bonds payable each at RM1,000 from 100 different lenders. By issuing bonds payable, company can borrow from thousands of investors rather than depending on a loan from one single bank or lender. Each, invest, each investor can buy or each investor can buy a specified amount of the company's bond. People invest bond to earn interest. This is the example for bond certificates. And you can see that from the certificate, the issuing company or the name of the borrower, the annual stated interest rate, the maturity date, and face value. So that is the information that you can get from a bond certificate. Face value, the amount a borrower must pay back to the bondholders on the maturity date, issuing company, or the name of borrower. Maturity date, the date on which the borrower must pay the principal amount to the bondholders and annual, annual stated interest rate. Normally, we have to record into the journal entry for bond, bond payable. Number one, to record issuance of bonds at face value. Debit bank, credit, bonds payable. Number two, to record interest expense, either six month or yearly payment. Debit interest expense, credit bank. Number three, to record the redemption of bonds. Debit bond payable. Debit interest expense depends on the situation and credit bank. Sometimes you just record debit bank payable, credit the debit bond payable credit bank. Okay, this is the example bond issuance. Warrison Company Limited had issued bond AA RM 20 million, 6% bond, face value RM 1000 each, issued on 1st May 2012 for 5-year bond payable. The company also issued bond BBRM 5 million, 8% bond, face value RM 1000 each, issued on 1st July 2012 for 10-year bond payable. The company paid semi-annual interest per year to investors on 30th June and 31st December. For every year, they will pay the interest 30th June or 31st December. You are required to prepare the journal entry to record number one, the issuance of bond. Number two, the payment of semi-annual interest 30th June and 31st December. And the third one, the payment of bond payable at maturity date. So we can see that there are two bonds, bond AA and bond BB.
so we have to record separately. Now, look at the date of maturity for bond AA. We issued, the company issued the bond at 1st of May 2012. So, for year 1 ended 30th April 2013. So, we have to calculate from year 1 until year 5. And we can find out that the date of redemption or the date of maturity for bond AA is 30th of April 2017. Now, we look at the date of maturity for bond BB. The company start to assign bond BB on 1st of July 2012. And we have to calculate for every year and at the end of year 10, the date of maturity is 30th of June 2022. That is the date of redemption or the date of maturity for bond PB. First, prepare journal entry to record the issuance of bonds AA. So, 1st May 2012, debit bank 20, 20 million and credit bond payable 20 million. The narration to record the issuance of bond payable. Now we have to record the journal entry to record the issuance of bond BB. So, we issued at 1st July 2012, debit bank 5 million and credit bond payable 5 million to record the issuance of bond payable. Now, we have to prepare the journal entry to record the payment of semi-annual interest. Or in other words, we have to record the interest expense that paid at 30th of June and 31st of December. So, for 30th of June, the interest expense is 200,000. So, we have to calculate the interest 6% times 20 million times 2 months. From 12 months. 2 months, that means we have to calculate for May and June. So we get answer 200,000. So debit, interest expense 200,000, and credit bank 200,000. And the second one, 31st December, we have to calculate for half year or 6 months over 12. 6% times 20 million times 6 over 12 and you get 600,000 debit interest expense credit bank 600,000 now we look at the payment of semi annual interest 30th June and 31st December so we look at for 2012 only so at 31st December 2012, we have to calculate the interest expense 8% times 5 million times 6 months from 12 months. 6 months that means from July until 31st December and you get the answer 200,000. So debit interest expense, credit, bank, the amount is 200,000. Thousand generation to record interest expense for 2012. Now we have to prepare the general entry for bond redemption. So we look at the general entry to record bond redemption for bond AA. So the date of maturity for bond AA is 30th of April. 2017. So debit bond payable 20 million. 
debit interest expense. We have to calculate the interest expense, 6% times 20 million times 4 over 12, 4 months. That means from January until 30th of April. And you will get the interest expense, 400,000 and credit bank. The total payment that we have to pay is 20 million 400,000. The narration to record the redemption of bond payable. And the last one, prepare the general entry to record bond redemption for bond BB. So the date of maturity for bond BB is 30th of June 2022. So the general entry debit bond payable for bond BB 5 million debit interest expense 200,000. So we have to calculate the interest expense 8% times 5 million times 6 month from 12 month. 6 month that means from January until 31st 30th of June 2022 and you got the answer interest expense is 200,000 credit bank 5 million and 200,000 the narration to record the redemption of bond payable that's all for today don't forget to watch my next video and don't forget to subscribe like and share. Thank you.